Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Parker Imerl, and this is The Conversation Station. Today, we are joined by Billy Guan. Billy is a highly successful entrepreneur and financial coach based in California who helps his clients build and preserve generational wealth through customized, tax-free financial plans and dynamic asset strategies. He has achieved great success in his field and has been honored as a top producing broker. Beyond his impressive professional achievements, Billy is also a hobbyist magician and a true believer in enriching the lives of others. Welcome on, Billy. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm really happy to have you here. We had uh, tried to record yesterday out of a Starbucks, but they need to step up their Wi-Fi ga- game because uh, <laughs> we were unfortunately unable to record there, but I'm super, super happy to have you. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. So why don't you just dive in, tell the audience a bit about yourself, and then we'll just talk about whatever comes up. Sure thing. So um, I worked in finance for the last uh, eight years, and your father is actually one of my closest friends, and he's the person that gave me a track to run on. So you know, I consider you guys family. You guys are very, very near and dear to my heart. And so uh, it's a crazy kind of thing to see how everything came full circle, because when I first got started in business, uh, I looked, looked up to your dad quite a bit, and he uh, took me under his wings and taught me everything I know about business. And now we're, we're kind of like peers, which is pretty cool. And so yeah. before I got into business, um, I was a hobbyist magician. Uh, I tried to go pro and I very quickly realized that I didn't want to live, you know, live out of my suitcase. So to say, I didn't want to go to different cities and States and perform and live out of suitcases and, you know, crappy hotel food and stuff like that. Yeah. And so that kind of put my, my dreams on a halt, halt a little bit, but I always loved the, um, the art of magic and I still practice it every so often. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, I learned a lot about how to interact with other people, interpersonal skills and things like that. And I have a very, very deep love for the art of magic. Yeah. Uh, I remember when we've, I remember when I was little and you would be at the business meetings and you would be wowing everyone with your, your crazy card tricks and <laughs> bending, bending a fork with your mind. Yeah. Dude, those, those things still blow my mind to this day. That's awesome. Like, how did he do that <laughs> when there's just randomly a bent fork that was that, that's like me. twisted? <laughs> what? What that did you say? Probably me. Yep. No, that's, that was absolutely you. But I remember after you would like it done and we'd have your bent fork that you magically bent, we would spend like the, me and my siblings would spend like the next hour just like trying to figure out how you did it. <laughs> that's one of the tricks that I practiced for, I think over like 10 years now. Um, this is one of the, uh, the tricks that got me to a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of different organizations that you know wanted me to to go there to perform to network and things like that and so that one fork trick opened a lot of doors for me <laughs> yeah it's funny how something little like that can just be so mind blowing but um i'm just curious like what has the what has the business the business side of things how has that evolved i mean how has your mentality changed from when you first came into business and where you are now so yeah absolutely back when i first started in business um you probably met me when i was fresh out of college that was when i was at my lowest right i was trying to figure out what i wanted to do with life and i didn't know the direction that i wanted to go and i just wanted to make a couple thousand extra dollars just to get my bills paid and, you know, when, when you're working to pay your bills and stuff like that, it makes it very difficult for you to actually build business because you're looking at people like a paycheck. And I didn't want to do that. And so as I got better and better with business, I started to think about the impact that I could leave on people. And, you know, as we got into the industry that we are in now, I can see a lot of the, um, the impact that I leave on people. And we're out here changing generations because it only takes one person to uh, change the entire course of you know their financial trajectory right so if i'm working with someone and i teach them principles on how to get out of debt chances are they're probably going to want to teach their kids how to do that and so my yeah. one or two conversation that i have with that one person completely changed the course of their life which i think is very very uh, rewarding and so obviously we get compensated very well to do that as well uh, but you know 
having that compensation there as well as making an impact. That's pretty much what I live for now. Yeah, because one one little lesson, one one thing, one person, it can change the trajectory of hundreds of years of family. Yeah, and it's it's incredible. So my next question, I like to I like to give to people. So what what does what does what what do you want to talk about, Billy? What's what's going on in your world? You know, what, what are you excited about? What are you working on that excites you? What what do you, what's going on in the world of uh, world of Guan? So uh, my world right now, I'm trying to build my business and teach a couple more agents to do exactly what it is that, you know, me and your dad does. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, I'm trying to, you know, develop more leadership skills and develop more leaders in my organization. And that's always a challenge because when you're working with people, people are, you know, people do what people do. And yeah. you have to work with them to their level and, you know, you can't want something more than they want it. And so that's been something that I'm learning a lot about and still, you know, sharpening my skill sets there. Um, I'm also working on building up my social media presence. Uh, that's always a challenge. I have no idea how that entire landscape really works. So I'm just kind of yeah. generating as much content as I can. Um, I should be doing what you're doing and start recording stuff. Uh, but I've just been, I would say I'm a little lazy on doing that because I don't know what to talk about. So yeah, I mean, that's what my podcast, I that's all my content right now is really clips from that. And one of the funny things is, is with these platforms, you have to put out so much content and be completely and utterly consistent for the algorithm to start favoring you. And on YouTube, the this last week, I was having the best week in the history of my channel. I was getting a thousand views as opposed to a hundred views. And then the internet went out. Oh. And you have to when the when the when the algorithm's happy, you have to feed it and feed it and feed it. And I was just in this workflow of putting out tons of content and the out keeping the algorithm happy. And then the internet went out, and we couldn't leave the house because we were it was too snowy. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh man, right right as I was like, wait, maybe I can maybe may, I started to turn upwards mm -hmm. and started to go vertical. I'm like, oh, dang it. So. Uh, that was that was tough, but content as a whole is a very tough thing to get into because it requires so much work and so much consistency because that documentation is so important. You have to be documenting everything and you have to have a backups of your backup when something goes wrong. Yep. And like with something like this, this, w this episode would have come out this morning at 10 a.m., but at Starbucks, their Wi-Fi wasn't good <laughs> enough after we got kicked out of Pete's Coffee for no reason. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's this constant um, evolution of problem solving, but you have to be so incredibly consistent that it's I, – I know I should have a cushion of content. I should have like like my entire week of content done before the week happens so that if the internet goes out for over 48 hours, mm -hmm. I have – content to put out things without internet i couldn't have even put it out but it sh i should still have that buffer i should probably have a one week buffer on podcast episodes but it's one of those things where it's such an immense amount of work oh absolutely but it's so valuable and so worth it that i can't make an excuse and be like oh it doesn't matter because i'm a because i'm a tech geek and a content geek where i look at this stuff and i see the impact and i see how powerful it is for me and and for others and so it's one of those things where there's no excuse, but it is so hard to do. Oh, what's simple to do, it's also simple not to do, right? And yeah. Another thing that you brought up that I wanted to touch upon, it's like you said, you know, when the algorithm's happy and it's feeding uh, your content into the For You pages and stuff like that, that's yeah. momentum. And that's when you actually have to step on the gas even further. And I want to kind of relate that to a lot of times when people build businesses, when things get crazy... That's when people are like, man, I want to take a step back real quick. That's actually that's when you got to dive head first. Yeah, that's that's the kiss of death. When you start doing that, you lose momentum. And momentum is what you want to get when you go into business. And it's hard to maintain sometimes if you're not ready. So you always have to be, you know, if you're if you're always ready, you don't have to get ready. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, yeah, momentum is everything. And it's one of those things where. Luckily, in business, you don't necessarily, unless your business runs off of like a YouTube algorithm or something like that, you don't have the algorithm randomly deciding to, to, to kick you off. Like, like I, I had a week where all my content did 20, 2,500 views each, and then Instagram decided it didn't like the person that the content was of, 
and he it's a guy who's been like banned or shadow banned basically where his content will randomly not get views and so that happened to my i think that's what happened to my account because i went from 2500 views and the next video got 200 but it's interesting because with business i guess it is kind of virtually the same the second you lose you the second you lose your momentum everything goes downhill from there i i, I remember a story i don't remember the exact story but some um a mentor of mine has had told me a story about a guy who built out this huge business right and then he sold the business or something like that no then he went and retired and the business draw the business went downhill and so then he came back to the company and he could never get it ba back going again because the company had lost momentum mm -hmm. and so that that um the importance of momentum is something that can't be stressed enough which i think that it is one of if not the most important part of business is staying consistent yep. consistency will take you wherever you need to go like you know i'm pretty much the uh the epitome of that right so over the course of my 10 year business journey i, I wouldn't say i'm the best at business um but I, I was definitely very very consistent and i outlasted a lot of people that you know i don't see anymore today people that were leagues ahead of me um and yeah, they're no longer in business. And so it's kind of like, how long can you last and how consistent you are with, you know, learning new things, implementing things, practicing what you preach, implementing and, you know, doing what you need to do to, to get to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. And like, it's interesting in terms of that consistency. I was lucky when the power, when the power went out, because at that point I had well, I, I at least had one piece of content to put out when the internet came back mm -hmm. because I had been, I worked on a, uh, I, I had cleaned my room a couple weeks ago, right? Clean, who, who cares? But the thing is, I can, one of my things is I can never get cleaning my room done in one day. And I said, I'm going to set aside this day. I'm going to get my entire room clean. I'm going to vacuum, mop all the stuff. But in order to do that, I'm going to record a piece of content. So then if the content's just half complete, I'm going to feel like an idiot. And so what I did is I, I recorded time lapses of me uh, cleaning my room, did a before and after. And then I sat down at this desk, didn't even have to turn on a camera. I grabbed my recorder and I wrote, I had written a script and I just talked about uh, eliminating the clutter from your life, right? Which is something I definitely struggle with. But the, um, but the principle of, of trying to clean up your environment, like my, the reason setting up today took longer than usual is because I was working on yesterday optimizing my setup like I had moved things around and then uh hadn't quite gotten to the point I hadn't been started reassembling it yet so it was kind of a rush but getting things clean getting clutter getting things decluttered is so important because when you're in an environment that is clean that is tidy that it's so you can be so much more efficient because you don't have things clogging up clogging you up physically and I think the same thing applies mentally and emotionally with the relationships and just in all of life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Even with the financial side of things, uh, a lot of times when I work with folks, they have years and years of, you know, mental clutter or financial clutter that they've accumulated through either bad habits or, you know, life throwing them some curveballs, whatever the case is. And in order for people to move ahead, we have to clean up those, those, uh, I don't want to call them mistakes, but those situations that they got into. And if we have that baggage, that, that messiness kind of holding us back, it never gets us to where we want to go, uh, whether financially, emotionally, relationship wise, whatever the case is, we have to clean out the baggage out with the, out with the bad and in with the good. Right. And the only time you can build on something is with, you know, a surface that's built on solid foundations. And if you don't even yeah. know where your foundations are, it's really hard to build anything on that. Yeah, so in, in that vein, how do you how do you find where your foundations are and how do you get out of that that uh, mental and financial clutter? So financial clutter, you just it's all about organization, right? So if you know that you have a bunch of debt and you're juggling like 16 different credit cards, it's very hard to, you know, get life on a more steady foundation if you don't know exactly where your money's going out of. And so when I work with clients, I make them organize excuse me, I make them organize their, their debts and stuff. 
they have to take a look at what their expenses are. So if they know what comes in, what goes out, then, you know, that's important because if you're bleeding out every single month, that, that debt gets bigger and bigger. So I make them find out what it is that they have to pay for every month and then organize it from, yeah. you know, big to small and work on the small things first. A lot of times when people are overwhelmed, it's because they're focused too much on the big things that they need to do. And I'm sure you, you've learned this before, but in order for you to make any progress on any type of goals, you have to break down the big things into small sizable yeah. chunks, right? That's one of, that's one of uh, Rodney's, Rodney's things. And so when uh, you start breaking things yeah. down to small sizable chunks, it makes it easier for you to, you know, knock that thing out so that you can pr progress to the next step and then progress to the next step and then progress to the next step. And so when I'm working yeah. with clients, I make them go through these small little situations, change one thing because we can't overhaul someone. When we overhaul someone, their, their skill sets aren't there enough to, to accommodate for that big of a change. So we have to be kind and hold space with the individual to grow into that change. And then once they you know, master that change, then we go into step two and then step three and then step four and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got to break things down. I think that's, that should be obvious. If you look at the lottery winners who barely last six months with their millions of dollars and it's just gone like that and they're bankrupt. And it, it's, it's interesting because if you get the lifestyle change without the skills that it, that it takes to sustain that lifestyle, you're never going to sustain it. And in there you have to have the steps because if you like in even like in business, if you want to make a million dollars this year, that sounds like a stupid amount of money. But then when you break it down into these little, little areas, you're like, oh, I only need to make X amount of dollars I, or I only need to reach out to X amount of companies to put my product in their business. All I need is to get seven to say yes let's say that okay well if i reach out to 70 i'm uh, there uh, that that's 10 percent should say yes and you make it this easy little thing where it takes this big overwhelming vision and you turn it into this easy thing where you're like oh i can do that mm -hmm. that's that's like i could do that in my sleep and then when you when that mindset when that mindset shift happens everything else falls into place. Absolutely. And it's, that's the, the consistency part, right? You can't control what other people do, but if let's say, like you said, it takes uh, 10 calls to get one and you want to, you know, increase those numbers and you want to get 10 yeses, what do you do? You increase how many people that tell you no, right? So you go yeah. door knock or call some other people, call some other businesses and increase those numbers so that, you know, the numbers work to your favor. And Absolutely. another point to what you were saying, yeah, like a lot of those lottery winners, theoretically, they shouldn't ever be bankrupt or homeless, but because their skill sets doesn't match their finances, it gets dragged back to where they are. And so a lot of times um, people think they want to be millionaires, but that's actually not true. Not too many people want to be millionaires. They just unfortunately want to just spend a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, because when people think of a millionaire, they think of someone who has a million dollars to throw around. Like, oh, I'm just gonna go buy a Lamborghini tomorrow because I'm bored. But 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 a millionaire these days, it's not that much money. That's not. It, it's not. It's, it's the not a, a, class. <laughs> yeah, a, a thirty a thirty five hundred square foot house. You're lucky in if in most areas if you can get that for a million dollars. And in, in and San Francisco, so, you take a look at some of the uh, the properties out here. It's like north of 800,000 for like two bedrooms, oh, something. Yeah. So million dollars doesn't go that far these days. And, you know, with everything going on the economy, you know, I'm, I'm very like, you know, I don't care too much about politics or anything like that. I, I look at what is and with national debts being the way that it is, you know, recession, inflation, all that type of stuff. Our current life, uh, our current way of life is about to get shaken up. And if you're not good with your money and you, if you're not saving up money and treating money with the level of respect that it needs to be treated, chances are you're not going to have the, the lifestyle that you want. Absolutely. And I think it's interesting because people are like, hey, I want to spend a bunch of money, right? But look at the people at the top. Look at Elon Musk. I, Elon Musk lives in a like 1,000 square foot box. He lives in a box. If you think that doesn't speak to the kind of habits he has, where he would, where he could easily afford the big, the biggest mansion in the world, 
and he chooses to live in a thousand square box that is five minutes away from where he works. It's yeah. People choose what they, you know, what's easier for them to get things done. Right. I don't know too much about Elon's, you know, living habits and whatnot, but you know, he has his own okay. private jet. And yeah. the reason why he has a jet is so that he can go to places where he needs to go in a much more timely, efficient manner so that he can focus on doing more important things than to wait in line for, you know, TSA. So, you know, sometimes money is a way for you to buy back time and, you know, no amount of uh, money can ever buy back a minute at a time. So that's why a lot of wealthy people, they use their, their wealth to outsource a lot of things that they don't have to do so they can focus more of their own time to work on things that are more important to them. Absolutely. I mean, time is by far the most valuable resource and currency known to man because it's the only thing that there is truly a finite amount of. And it's, it's the only currency where you, where you can't, where the only thing you can do is lose it and you never know how much of it you have left. So, so spending your time efficiently, like efficiency, that's the other big thing in all, all walks of life and all categories, all different things. Time is so immensely valuable mm -hmm. because it, it, you can never get it back. I can't, I can't go to the store and buy time. I mean, heck, if I could, I'd probably be there right now buying another couple hundred years, but, <laughs> but you can't. Yeah. And, and on that note, like that was one of the things that was a changing point in my life. Cause I remember when I was, um, you know, freshly out of college and I was working as a tutor for kids with autism and I was on my lunch break and I was sitting in or standing in line at a subway trying to figure out, you know, how much I need to, to pay for for lunch. And, you know, back then minimum wage is roughly around, um, seven something. And I was lucky enough to make like, you know, 15 bucks an hour. And when I got to Subway and I made my order and everything, I was like, oh, crap, it's like $25 for sandwich, you know, a soda, some chips and what, whatever, right? And I'm like, in my head, this means I have to work two hours. I have to trade two hours of my life to buy a sandwich. And from that moment on, I was like, I, I can't live life like this. My, my life is work, worth um, a little bit more than, you know, two hours for a sandwich, right? So yeah. that's one of the reasons why I got in business as well. Yeah, I mean, if you're real smart these days, since minimum wage is fifteen dollars, you work at the subway because they give you because they'll give you free sandwiches. <laughs> smart, oh, lunch right? break! Oh, oh, I'll just make myself a sandwich. I'll I'll just put a piece of tape over the security camera and make myself a sandwich. <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened there. I just I slipped and and put and intentionally put tape on the camera. I slipped and ate a sandwich. Yeah, slipped and made a sandwich. Uh, Slipped and slipped and took the money out of the register. Oh, slipped and went that. to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you hate it when you slip and end up spending your life in prison, right? <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I think that um, it's interesting because for me right now, I don't have like a normal job, and I'm trying to start making some money. And I set a goal, and I looked at it, and I'm like, hey, that's literally making it. That's 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 just. That's the amount of money a, a minimum wage worker makes working f full time. So I'm like, okay, because the, the, the goal seemed big. And then I'm like, wait, that's 15 bucks an hour. I, I can, I'm worth more than that. Mm -hmm. And so you, when, I, when I'm able to look at that and be like, hey, if I'm going to be doing this through creative services, because that's the one thing I think, no matter, because some people are scared with AI, the one thing that AI will never replace is creative services. Anything creative and AI will never be to the point to think the same way a human brain will. Yeah, and one so, thing that I, I, I heard a comedian talk about this the other day, and I, I thought it was so funny. Um, I don't think people are smart, right? Not, not a lot of people are smart. Um, there's a lot of intelligent people out there, but there's a difference between intelligent, intelligence and, and know, smart. Yeah. And so AI is created by a bunch of intelligent people. And if people are not necessarily smart, artificial intelligence, you know, I'm like, ah. it's just, it, it, there's a reason it's called AI and not AS. It's intelligent, not smart. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's interesting because I, I, I utilize AI in so many of my different workflows because it speeds things up. Again, it's like those billionaires. I don't, I can't buy a private jet 
but I can use AI to, to help me with some of these processes that would take me longer. And so in, in that, in that light, it's, it's like, if you look at these things and with AI, people are scared, but if you util, if you are utilizing the tool, then the tool can't replace you because you are more valuable than the tool mm -hmm. because you are someone that knows how to use the tool well. Yep. It's always and a condition so, that's, uh, that's going to be a little bit more skilled with whatever it is that they're using. Yeah. And so it's interesting for me as I, as I move into this space where I'm trying to make money and as I start on this journey of entrepreneurship where I, I take a look at some of these greater tools and I get to utilize them, but then I also have to, but then it's interesting when I have to start looking at, okay, wait, how do I monetize my skills? And what is the best, most efficient use of my time to go about that? Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm basically looking at how can I make full time uh, work, uh, full time minimum wage workers wage without working full time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, I don't know. It's interesting. I've I've been trying to get on that on that journey, and getting into that space is something that I kind of struggle with, and getting into that mindset, but. It's definitely interesting when you break things down like that, but I don't know. I don't know what the next step is for me because I know the kinds of services I need to offer and I'm doing some things, but currently I can't start really making money until I build out that credibility in but but the good thing is is I'm is I am doing the service that I want to sell to other people for my mom right now because she's working on launching a business. Mm -hmm. And so the service that I'm that I'm doing i'm doing that service for her and it's helped her a ton and so it's like hey i just get to help my mom with stuff and that and then then i'm like okay i i helped build this business from the ground up that's why you should hire me mm -hmm. absolutely and that's why social media is super important these days because everybody wants to see what you've done um, they want to see why they should hire you right i get a whole bunch of people hitting up my dms asking me if you know i need social media managing and some other stuff like content creation, things like that. And I look at their page and they have less people following them than I have people following me. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I can't really trust the, the work you do. Cause if you say that you're as good as you are, you should have, you know, the, uh, the, what's it called? The testimonials or the, yeah. the, the track record to, to show. For yeah. It. And it's the same for me. Like I, I want to make sure that all my clients are taken care of. So I make sure that when I do take care of my clients in a very uh, good way, I ask them for testimonials or, you know, ask them to write, you know, a couple words about their interaction with me or how my service is to them. Because the more people give you reviews, it's not you stroking your own ego. It's someone else saying, Hey, this person is actually good at what they do. And here's what they did to help me out. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because, um, people, I think that people are, uh, more valuable than any, any form of capital. It, it's like that question, would you rather have, um, a million dollars or a million friends? And I would pick a million friends 10 times out of 10 because you could ask every friend for $2 and they'll give it to you <laughs> and you $2 million. So people are immensely more valuable because if you, if you have people that will testify, to you and your skills and you have the skills to back it up and then you have and then you can utilize that and put that out on social media to broadcast to more people your vision comes alive through people there is no business there is no vision without the people you serve absolutely and business is just you know when people say uh, like businesses aren't people well yeah it's not it's a group of people right yeah and so to your point you know your dad is one person that completely changed my life and I can't ever thank him enough. And he's probably going to laugh at this a little bit, but you know, that, that one person completely changed who I was as a person when I was a kid thinking about making money and now to having a, you know, a, a business that's doing decent um, to growing my, my business and whatnot. Right. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him. And like you said, if, given the choice between taking, um, you know, a million dollars or knowing a million people, I would rather know a million people because one person can change the trajectory of my life like that. You know, how many other people can, you know, sprinkle a little, some, some seasoning to, to my life like that. Right. Yeah. Me, me thinks a million dollars 
him. One person can change the course. Yeah, absolutely. But it's funny. Um, yeah, because I think the the a million dollars example is something where where that's that's the surface level of it. But when you look at a million people, and here's here's the thing: half of those there might only be half of those people that are worth your time. But it's still but that's five hundred thousand people. Yeah, and and like it's interesting because my uh, my birthday is Sunday, and instead and. I've ha- I've been getting really intentional with the people that I'm spending my time mm. with and it's like okay I could go I could I could go hang out with a couple of my friends but my best friend lives in Wisconsin so it's like okay wait you know what I'm going to do I decided to have uh I I'm going to sushi and then going bowling with Rodney and Berger. Awesome. So so but it's interesting when you look at it and you have and you know the uh, you know a large enough group of people that you can dial down that group to the people that can pour into you and are giving you value and then you can get intentional with it it's so vastly impactful but that starts with you knowing people absolutely and you know coming into business right this is why i think it's so freaking crazy um when i got into business uh the first business project that me and your dad worked on i didn't know anybody in in that uh industry i just came in as a stranger and just met people and that's where you know skills from learning about magic and interpersonal skills really really came in handy because that's the only way that i knew how to like you know introduce myself and stuff like that so if i'm not good at anything else i'm a good schmoozer (laughs) so you know i got to know your dad got to know some of the other people and those individuals that we worked with poured into me like how rod is uh pouring into you rod is an amazing entrepreneur so smart and he's one of the guys that I learned a lot from when I first started and it's definitely crazy to see like, you know, I can call him a peer now and, you know, from being where I was before to now, I wouldn't have been able to, to grow to the degree that I have without people uh, pouring into me. Yeah. And it's, it was funny. I was, my mom showed me a picture the other day of when she was mentoring Rod. And it's so funny to see someone like that, who you look up to, who was your mentor when they're, when they like 20 years ago, when they look, when they're, when they were literally 20 and, and, uh, were being poured into. And so I, I think it's, it's interesting because it is one of those things where kind of like a, kind of like a bloodline. There is this, this mentorship line where, where it's interesting, my, my mom poured into Rodney, my parents poured into Rodney, and then Rodney is one of the, is the main, my main mentor right now who I spend a ton of time around because he does the stuff I want to do. And it's interesting to see that line where it's like, hey, this, my mom poured into him, he's pouring into me, now I'll pour into someone else. And it's, it's interesting to see because I think that there are family trees and there's mentorship trees. And one could argue that the, the mentorship tree is just as important, if not more important, as the, as the blood family tree, because the mentorship is where the, where the brains and the, the, the smarts come from. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't have too big of a family. And so, you know, I consider you guys family. Um, You know, I have friends that, you know, I'm really, really close with that I consider family. And it's just family is the people you choose that you want to be around with and people pour into you and they enrich your life. Uh, and they expedite your growth. That's the people that you want to be around. And, you know, I've learned at a very early age in my business, um, you know, the people that you hang out with, you are the average of the five people that you hang out with. So yeah. if you hang out with quality people that are pouring into you, then you're going to grow up to be a quality person. And then you can impact other people the same way. Yeah. And it's interesting because up, uh, up where I live, um, I, I haven't met very many people that I that I really want to spend, a, especially at my age, that I want to that I want to spend a ton of time around because they don't they aren't providing value to me. And so the the number one person I like spending time around uh, up here is um, a staff at the youth center who's uh, 29 years old. And it, but but it's it's really interesting to see. Um, as I've become um, incredibly intentional with who I spend my time around, I'm like, dang, all the people that I was spending my time around up here, I'm no longer spending time with them. It's quite interesting to look at things like that. Yeah, and you know, it's as you get older, uh, in my age, I don't see a lot of the people that I hung out in uh, in high school anymore. Um, and you know, obviously, one thing is like we grow apart. That's one big thing. 
I also don't know too much about what's going on with their life. And, you know, even sometimes when you try to interact with folks like that, you just get a disconnect with the conversations because you're no longer at that level. And not to say they're at a different level, but, you know, wavelength wise, right? You're doing your thing. They're doing their thing. And if you want to progress and build that relationship up a little bit, sometimes it's a little bit harder to get back on the wavelength that, you know, that you want to connect on. And so absolutely there's limited associations, expanded associations and get that person out of my face kind of thing. Right. And I'm, I'm in a yeah. phase of my life where I, I want to focus on my expanded associations. So every time that I get to hang out with your dad, I learn a lot. I hang out with the people at our firm, um, people at our team. Um, you know, I'm always soaking uh, the information in so that I can, be better myself or improve what I need to improve on or learn certain things that I may not necessarily be super, super well versed in. And, you know, th those are the type of relationships that I want to start to foster more, a little bit more like in, in my age, because yeah. if I'm the person that is the quote unquote wealthiest person in my room, I'm in the wrong. Room. You're in the exactly. wrong. Exactly. I want to learn how to stack some extra zeros in my bank accounts. Right. Yeah, and I think that's the interesting thing for me right now is because a lot of the like like when 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 a lot of my time is being spent around Rodney and around his network, then when I go to try to hang out with other kids my age, the people that are doing that and on that wavelength at this point in their lives is so vastly small. Luckily, luckily, I do get to interact with a lot of people my age in, on that wavelength through uh, Apogee, which is the mentorship program the, that I was in and now get to stay in uh, after I graduated as a as a uh, a accountability call uh, leader. But I get to interact with those people. Mm -hmm. But it, but locally, um, I look at these these people and obviously know not not trying to put them down or anything but i look at them and i'm like i'm just at a different phase in my life and on a different wavelength where when they're busy talking about video games but what but i want to talk about how i plan to make twenty five thousand dollars in the next x amount of months mm -hmm. and that's that's what's far more interesting to me is building out a business plan it it it, it does become a struggle to foster those relationships and it's definitely something i can still do because i'm at my core i'm a people yeah. person i love hanging out with people i would rather hang out with a lame person than no one at all <laughs> even if even if tech even if maybe to some degree that's not as valuable as hanging out maybe hanging out with no one is more valuable i would so much rather be around people mm -hmm. and so i think that it gets to a point where it's an interesting balance where i'm like hey i i, I like you you're cool but trying to navigate that space of being on a different wavelength than someone, but still wanting to maintain the relationship. It's a balancing act. Absolutely. And, and it's important to understand how to, you know, dial those wavelengths in because you have to like with business, you have to be able to connect with people on an emotional level. No one cares about what you can offer and, until you kind of hit them where they feel the most. Right. And so I'm not saying don't hang out with, you know, people your age or anything like that. You know, if they want to talk about video games, you got to know a little bit about video games. I mean, I still play games yeah. uh, even to this day, right? So Absolutely. it's important to kind of pick and choose when you want to, you know, interact with certain folks. If you're in a stage in your life where you're like, I need to focus on business, then absolutely. You got to you know be in the lane where you're working yeah. with people that are more business oriented. But if you're on that lane, pretty much like 80% of the time, you're going to burn out, right? You got to. You got to take some yeah. time for yourself as well. And, you know, when you have friends that are more so on the wavelength of, you know, relaxation, hanging out kind of thing, you have to be able to dial in on that every so often. Absolutely. And so um, up here we have a local youth center, which is where that, that guy was just telling you about, who's 29, who I like to hang out with, um, Craig. Uh, he works there. And so so the cool thing is, is I go there twice a week. I'm on their leadership team. So I have a meeting there to hit here around four today. And so I get to work with him. Uh, I get to go into the youth center and hang out with other kids my age. And I'm working on helping them launch a podcast, which is really exciting and fun because I get to utilize my skills to provide value to them. But I get to I get to hang out with people my age and I get to hang out with all those all those people there. And it's it is nice to be able to get that that connection and obviously I connect with some people there more than others 
but but it's nice because I get to have that balance of hanging out with people. But I think the other thing is that it's not not even even if I haven't found people at the same level, I haven't I haven't really found people up here that are even on, even if they were a, 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 like at a different stage, even on a similar path, or or even like interested in the game of content. Like if 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 I found some people that were maybe a couple steps below, but were. Or, or, or I feel like putting it that way just sounds like I'm sounds rude, but not, I don't know. It's, no. I don't know exactly. Yeah. How so true, though. one of the biggest thing that I believe in is that I'm not better than anyone and I'm no better than anyone. I may be a little bit further yeah. ahead because I've had more training, more mentorship. But if let's say I have a person that's maybe let's say two steps behind me, they're still pretty close in proximity and I could probably learn to sharpen certain things from them. Right. Absolutely. You, you push each other and you raise each other up. And so with, with, um, you know, being no better than anyone else at any given point, you know, you can have a slip, like at any point, my income can slip. So that means I have to stay on top of my game. And so that's, that's one of the biggest things for me is I'm not better than anyone. I've had more training. I've had more mentorship. I've been through more life experiences I can see, you know, a little bit more clearly what's in front of me because of those experiences. But that doesn't mean I'm better than you. Like you just haven't experienced yeah. it yet. And then the I'm no better is pretty much like I'm human too. Like there's situations that I've been in where I'm like, okay, I could probably do this a little bit better. Um, you know, my income slips a little bit. Business is not as hot this month than it is last month, whatever the case is. You're not immune to to what life has to throw at you. Absolutely, yeah, and I think that that's the mentality I approach it with, and I think that's a great way of putting it because it it is something where I I know I'm no better than any of these people, and the and 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 um and definitely human make those mistakes, and I think it's it's interesting because um finding but once I find I'm excited because I know at some point I'll find someone on a similar path. And like even my best friend, he's 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 not on he's not in the same like some a lot. Are, it's interesting because our interests don't align. You see, it's interesting how there are those people where your interests could be totally off, but you guys you guys just work and like he's on the, our interests may be totally off, but he's on the same level mm. as me. And then there are some people that where they're gonna be on a different level than you, but but your interests mm. align. And so I'm. I'm excited to find those people because then I get I get to help um, people out in that vein, and like I, I recently started an internship at the local media <clears throat> center, and so I get to get some people who are kind of in that content side of the things. They're not quite going at it as hard as I am, but I at least get to get some people with some of the same knowledge and get to help them out in that in that regard. And so it's it's fun. It's it's relationships are so complicated, and I think another the the complicated thing is trying to co- communicate some of these things like like I'm communicating without without these days some people can get really offended really mm-hmm. easily and it's like communicating the fact that I just think that I'm a, at a different stage than you are in the process but without making them think I'm saying I'm way better mm-hmm. than them it's it's interesting where at this point I just kind of help them and don't communicate any of that and and I just and and if they if they want more help from me, they'll come to me yeah, for more help. Choose your battles, right? And I just let them. Yeah, you don't want to say something that will offend people uh, because ultimately, how you make people feel will you know open doors for you. Because if you know, if I'm yeah. you know very abrasive to someone that I know is you know super successful, that person would say, "Hey, get the hell out of my face!" Right? So yeah, you just want to choose your battles and. You know, everyone has the battles that they're going through. Just be kind always, right? Absolutely. And it's funny because for me, uh, uh, this all kind of comes back to social media where social media is so polarizing. <laughs> uh, some, sometimes I'll make a clip and I'm like, do I put this out or not? You know, you know, do, do, do I put this out or not? Because it's maybe a podcast guest saying something controversial or it's me saying something controversial. And if it's a podcast guest, maybe I'm 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 more uh, inclined to put it out. But I'm like I'm saying something controversial. Oh no! What's the algorithm going to think? What are people going to think? Ah! Mm-hmm. But but that that's one of those things with social media where you get in this. Social media is a game that is so volatile that you have to tread so lightly. 
but you also have to, in the early stages, when you're like me with 120 followers, 130 followers on Instagram, you that is when you get to pick who your audience mm-hmm. is. But the trouble is that as life goes on, who you want your audience to be is always changing. So I'm like, I could easily say something super controversial that would alienate half the half the world, right? Hey, keep the controversy. But it's like, Take a look at Eminem, right? Eminem is one of the most controversial artists out there. And he's at the top of the game. So it's not necessarily about being controversial. Uh, it's more so like what what your personal um, stance is and you know what your views are and what you're willing to, to stand for. And I, I stand for exactly. being kind always. I don't care about you know politics or anything like that. I don't even know like what's going on in that realm, honestly. I don't care. Yeah. I just care that if people are being hurt, you know, that's something that we should probably, you know, not do, right? Yeah, and like I got uh, on on one of my clips a while ago, I got a hate comment on YouTube, and I replied with "thank you." Hey, turn your haters to consumers. Like, if they hate you enough no, to leave a comment, they're still consuming your products, right? Yeah, yeah. So here's the funny thing: I, I reply "thank you," and a, that person must have been expecting like me to reply angrily because after that, they're like, they just said "you're welcome" and then put like hashtag leader. So so they went from from hating. And then I, I and then I responded with kindness, and then they re- replied with something that made them sound like a fan. Hate people or hurt people, hurt people. That's that's all it is. Yeah, it, it, and it's it, it's it's funny though because in in my opinion, I think that being kind to everyone is so important. And when you can do that, you raise you raise the level of everyone around you versus if you're rude. Because if I'm rude to people. And, then, and I'm preaching about being kind. Well, no one's going to listen. Yeah. But if I'm kind and I'm kind and I'm kind in every sense of the word, heck, I might have moments where I get frustrated. I might have moments where I tell someone to get out of my face. But at the core of it, I'm consistently kind. Again, this comes down to consistency. That When people see that, it raises their levels. Because I know when I see someone who's consistently kind, even to the haters, it makes me want to be consistently kind even to mm-hmm. the haters. Yeah, and, you know, haters are the people that probably are your biggest fans. They just want to shout so that they get your attention. And so, again, turn your haters to consumers, uh, to quote Jack Harlow, right? Yeah, and I... um I definitely, whenever I get a hate comment or something, it excites the heck out of me. Because first off, I don't get that many comments. <laughs> so even if they're hate comments, I'm happy. But second off, it just means I'm saying something that, that, that there's a message mm-hmm. to. That there's enough substance there for someone to disagree with. Because if someone disagrees with what I am saying, then and, and they comment on it, that means that I am saying something that is worth saying because there are people that care enough about it to oppose me. And if someone opposes me, the one thing, I am happy if you oppose me. The one thing is, if you if you oppose me and you're not open to a conversation about it, that's when I start to dislike you a little bit. Because if you're going to oppose me on something, I want to have a conversation about it. I want to dive mm-hmm. into why. Why do you oppose this? What is your opinion? So that I can so that I can look at at the va- at your stance on this topic and your stance on the world and reframe my view of the subject to take into account your mm-hmm. point of view. Absolutely. And there's very, very few people that are willing to do that these days. Just perspective is very, very imper- important because everybody has a different view on certain things. Um, I get a lot of, uh, I don't want to say hate because I'm, I'm nice to everybody, right? But I get resistance um, from a lot of the financial influencers on Instagram. A lot of times they say things that are like, oh, you know, he's just a salesman. Well, yeah, I am a salesman, but um, there are reasons why I, you know, uh, promote certain things. And in that same vein, aren't you a salesman too? You're trying to promote your your ebook, your course, trying to promote this stock, whatever the case is, right? You're not even supposed to really do that, by the way. Um, you're not licensed to do that, but that's a different conversation. And so... If people want the smoke, you know, I got all the weed, but it's, if, if you don't want to have that conversation, you know, then 
then we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. stand where we'll stand, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's funny. I, cause I always hear if you want the smoke, but I, but, but, but it, Hey, I, I hadn't heard the second <laughs> half. That's hilarious. I like that. Um, but it's, it's definitely interesting to look at it from that, that perspective. And when you have people that, that, that don't like something you're saying, but they themselves are doing things that, that almost you feel if they, Sometimes there are those people that are doing something that if someone else was doing it, they would co comment on it saying that they dislike it. And so when you look at it like that, it gets to a point where it can feel almost mm -hmm. comedic, where you get to be like, hey, look at what you're doing and then come back to me once you've reevaluated your stance and your, um, your view on the world. And I think that's, again, a lot of people aren't willing to... Um, to what what's what's the word i'm looking for here um to attack their own thoughts challenge they're their not own, willing their to own challenge challenge your own beliefs and i think that that is something that is so valuable if you can challenge your own beliefs because uh through the apogee program every friday i get to talk to mentors and i get to talk to these people and one of the questions that i used to ask them a lot is if a young man comes to you who wants nothing more to work for you, what do you want to see from him? They're like, I want him to be coachable and I want him to be ready to learn. And besides that, I just want him to be a good person. Okay. If you're not willing to go to war, there's what I was looking for. Go to war with your own ideas. If you're not looking, if you're not ready and you don't want to go to war with your own ideas, then you're not teachable. Mm -hmm. You can't learn anything if you don't want to learn. Yep. Sick this pocket parabellum. If you want peace, prepare for war, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where, especially these days, it is, and especially, it's, if, I think that's the one of the biggest curses of social media is the polarization of the world. Because so many people are one side or another, especially in politics. I don't follow politics very much, but I know enough to know that people are one side or another. And people will vote for a candidate based on red or blue. But I think what's important is just, just take a step back and evaluate what's going on. And don't just take one side because that's the side you're told mm -hmm. to take. Shades of gray. Look at the white is in black or what white, shades of gray. Yeah. 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 And I think that if you have, if you have three things that are most important to you, then look at, look at what's going on in the world and look at whatever, even politics, whatever politics, baseball, freaking football. I don't care. Take a look at what's important to you and pick a side based on what's, which no one's ever going to agree with you fully. But if someone if someone agrees with what's important to you more than someone else, it's good. But don't take their word for it. Never takes. Don't take my word for what I'm seeing. Go ask other people about if what I'm saying is true. Like if I tell you to do that to to go and be consistent, and you don't believe me, heck, you shouldn't believe me. I'm si I'm I'm 15 <laughs> years old. I turned 16 on Sunday. I don't know crap. But go ask successful businessmen. And go and get the consensus from the world. What is the successful person's consensus? And then make your decision off of that. So if you are, I'm going to go back to politics because politics is the easiest way to portray this. If someone says that they want to pass X bill and they say X bill is going to help with X thing, look at the data, ask around, ask the people that the day, if it's not going to affect you, ask the people it's going to affect and make your decision off of that. Don't just trust um don't just trust the candidate because they said this and Jeffrey Bezos agrees with that. Things always change like even in business, right? Something can be, you know, the way it is today and the next day. I mean, even just with Instagram, the algorithm is right now and then they come up with an update and things change. Even with, you know, yeah. in in my line of work, things can change. Re regulations, legislations, things can change. And you just don't want to be so rigid in, in certain things that you can't be okay with, you know, adapting to, to new changes. Yeah, you've got to be prepared to adapt. And I think that that's one of those things that I've, 
it's one of my core messages I like to talk about with people. It's it's the phrase of fire aim ready. Just go. Don't don't just start doing start working towards where you want to go, but do that with the intention that at that at some point either where you were want where you want to go or the path to get there is going to change and you've got to be ready to change as it comes. So you start going, you can hone in on where you want to go, you can take that aim, but you need to always be ready to change course at a yeah. moment's notice. You need to always be ready to embrace the changes that the world is going to present and utilize that to better. Yeah, and one up. of the funniest things about that is uh, um, when I met with your dad uh, before I became a financial consultant, um, he, he said something to me. He was like, Things can change. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing it. It's been years since we had that conversation. But he basically said, you can get to where you want to go. I mean, you can either get there in a Toyota or you can get there in a Mercedes. Um, you know, one of the vehicles is got, probably going to get there a little bit faster, right? And so that that to me was like, all right, that makes sense. We all want to strive for um, you know success. But sometimes the the strategies or the uh, vehicles that we have may not necessarily get us to where we need to go. It'll get us to a certain point, but at a certain point we need to you know, switch gears a little bit. Right. Yeah. At some point, at some point that Toyota is going to, going to start breaking. And it, at some point that to Toyota is going to be totaled and you're going to have to buy a Mercedes. So I think that you, and that also in that realm of buying things and investing in things, I think the most important investment anyone can ever make is into themselves because there are so many so many opportunities where you could invest there's you could invest money here invest money there but none of that matters if you yourself aren't pouring in and working hard yep. to be better. That's why mentorship is so important because there's only so much you yourself know how to get to and until you meet someone that's at the level that you want to to get to it starts to clear up the, the the fog of war a little bit, right? And that's why I love your dad so much. He's someone that I aspire to grow up to be. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm always learning from him because I know what I know, but he probably knows a little bit more because he's been through the ringer a little longer, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it's one of these interesting things, as I've talked to both you and Andrew, who are both mentored by my dad. It's interesting to hear these people talk talk about my dad in this way where he's their mentor, where in my eyes, I'm like, oh, it's just my dad, you know? And so it is interesting to see see that where where um, it, it is kind of funny for me where I'm like, hey, my dad's pretty legit, but in my mind, it's just, just my dad, mm -hmm. you know? And it's 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 cool to see that. I, I got to get my dad on the podcast, but so far in the last month, I've had two two financial consultants mentored by my dad. So I, I, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> ease off of ease off of that a little bit before I have him on. So it's not just like financial consultant, financial consultant, oh, financial yeah. consultant. Yeah. Hey, do you guys want to hear right? some more from a, <laughs> yeah, what? a magician what? too? What did you say? Oh yeah. Magician. Um, magic happening now on screen. Um, oh, hi dad. Are you on? Yes, I'm. Um, but yeah, I think that that's, it, it is very interesting to look at my dad like that mentor. And as I get older, get to the point where he is starting to mentor me in some ways where when I was, you know, five years old, he wasn't going to give me uh, financial advice for my future. But um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy you came on here. And uh, thank you for coming on, man. My pleasure. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you ever, if you ever need anything from me, not, not that you necessarily will, so feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always happy to help, help people out in any way I can. Um, and yeah, uh, just thank you again. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Parker Emerald. I've been talking to Billy Guan and this has been the Conversation Station.